Hi everyone. Today will be my November 2018 wrap up. This month I've read three novels. The first one is The Virgin of Small Plains. The second book will is 1984 and the third book is the second part of the Unwind series, Unholy. Um, I'll be discussing a little bit about each book. This is the first time I've actually done a wrap-ups uh, series or show. Usually I just um, go with the book individually and do a whole video about that. But I've noticed that I don't make as many as much content and I kind of dwell too much on the book, trying to give too much away or trying to analyze it a little bit as much. So, um, I'm trying something new this time and hopefully it works out. Uh, let me know by giving me a like or leaving a comment down below. In the description box, I will leave each book, um, the title and the link to the Goodreads account for that said book. And here we go. Okay, sorry. I'm doing this uh, video in three parts. That way I can give each uh, book time and thought into the discussion instead of going one off the other. Uh, starting off, I'm going to be discussing The Virgin of Small Plains, a novel of suspense by Nancy Pickard. This book was actually the first and probably going to be the only library book I read this year. I haven't read any for quite a long time, so that was my New Year's resolution, was to read at least one library book this year, and I, I did that. And... Yep, that's about it. Uh, this book, for the first time in my life, I can say, wasn't that good. This book reads more like a Lifetime movie. The characters, a, lo a majority of the characters are very basic. A lot of characters are only defined by one trait. So basically the book takes place between the year 2004 and 1987 and it involves three friends, Abby, Mitch, and Rex. Mitch is dating Abby, Mitch is Rex's friend. Basically it takes place in Kansas and both years, both scenes are taking place usually around the winter season. So this is a very atmospheric book. If you do happen to pick up this book, I do recommend reading it during the winter season. But I would not try to wait forever to read it. I would try to finish it off within the weekend just because the story's not that good and the longer you take to finish it, the longer the higher the chances you probably won't, but if you sit down and read it within the weekend, you probably get it done. And the uh, art story, I would probably give it like 2.5 to 3 out of 5 stars or however you want to word it. Because... Alright, the character Rex has a brother. I forget his name now. But... Basically, his character trait is he's an asshole. And that's the only thing he's defined by. It doesn't explain why. It gives no resolution to between him and his brother. He's just a bad guy. Even though people have relationships, they've known him all his life, he's just very basic and it's just going off like this guy's just what he is. No other character definement, no history of him, no emotion, no anything. Which I just kind of feel how, if you ever watched a Lifetime movie, this is really how this guy acts. 
Like, no. Like, he doesn't feel like a real person. Even the major characters very rarely feel like real people. I feel like I'm watching a caricature of people in this, or not watching, reading caricatures of people in this book. But basically, it takes place between these two years. In 1987, all three friends are in high school. They find a body who none of the townspeople know except for the three friends, uh, the three friends, all their parents. And two out of the three friends know who this girl is, but nobody says, nobody knows exactly how she got murdered. And that's really about it. You learn how the girl who was murdered interacted with the friends and like the town and the 1987 part of the book. In 2004, they're just trying to solve the murder and like who done it. It's okay. It's really okay. This would probably be my least favorite book I've read that I read in November. I don't really recommend it. And usually I recommend most books, but this one... I read it to the end. I did finish it. It's alright. Um, I would never suggest it to anyone offhand. And I probably would never reread it again. And I know that sounds harsh. But if you're looking for a really light novel. And you just want something to burn through the weekend. Especially again during the winter months. Or if you live in Kansas. It does describe a lot of Kansas. So if you like reading about that state. I do kind of recommend that book. Because I'm sure you could picture how it is in the novel more so. And you might be a little bit more intrigued by it. But other than that. Don't really recommend it. The ending... I kinda seen coming, I kinda didn't. But it wasn't a good ending. Like, and I don't mean like sad or depressing or anything, it was just like, eh. And after a while the whole story made me, eh. And I usually tend to like mystery novels, this one not so much. But... Anyways, they find the girl's body, 2004, also they call it, the reason they call her the Virgin of Small Plains is basically, after the girl died, they gave her a, um, what's the word for it, a unmarked grave, because they don't know who she is, and the people who do know who she is, they don't mention, which I kind of find a little odd, since this is such, the town in this book's described really small, that nobody else knew who this girl was, like, at all. Which threw me off a little bit. But anyways, it becomes kind of like a saint cult with the, the virgin. Um, where people go pray to her grave and they get healed or she does whatever they ask of them. It's a, that's like a little part of the supernatural aspect of it. Which, towards the end, there was like one sad scene to where one of the characters feels a little bit more human than the rest of them. So, like, that's why that part of the story made me feel a little bit more like, okay, I can kind of understand this. This seems more realistic. This like, reads a little bit deeper than, a, like, a Lifetime movie. So, that's why I'd probably give it three out of five. Um... Yeah, if you do pick it up, it's a alright read. Again, don't recommend it. Oops, hold on just a second. Nineteen eighty four by George Orwell. This was a close with uh, being my favorite book that I've read in November. I won't um, bore you with the description since this is considered a classic 
and there's a lot of articles on the book 1984 as well as a lot of YouTube videos going over the analysis, the symbolism, everything else. I think even there's even some videos where it goes on by chapter by chapter. This book is, um, so I won't go over too much with the storyline. It's about a man who describes basically what he thinks of the government at first or what he believes to know what is real and it goes from there it talks about the history of the governments uh, in the world which is broken up into three different governments how the government controls everything uh, through the power of technology and basically threats This is a very real novel, or it feels real. I've seen some reviews to where they said the characters feel a little two-dimensional, but it's not that long a book. I actually have it right here. Uh, this is this. Here we go. And the government is referred to as Big Brother, or like the leader of it. But they never really say if the leader is real or if he's more of a symbolic idea. Basically, it discusses how everything's controlled, how everyone has TVs in their house and they have to be on for so part of the day and they can look at you at any time. Um, there's a thing called thought crime where they could arrest you if you think if they think you're thinking the wrong thoughts, like if you're thinking bad about the government. There's three uh, parts of the government, the Ministry of Plenty, which deals with the economic issues, which they kind of, I want to say it was coffee. Like used to, you would be able to get like 30 grams of coffee per month. But then they had to lower it at to like 25 grams of coffee or something. So it's saying, but they changed the story to where, oh, well, the government used to only allow you 20 grams, but now you can get 25 grams of coffee to make it seem like the government's giving you more when in fact they're taking away less than what you used to be able to receive. And there's a lot of different things of that. Um, don't quote me on this one, but I believe there was like a Ministry of Propaganda. I'm not too sure if that was exactly what it was called. And that one just dealt with like uh, filtering the news out, filtering history, and everything of that nature. And then, and this, uh, uh, that's where the main character, that was his... Uh, job was at and there's also the ministry of love which is basically uh, the military not really the military like the police force where they enforce the law so it's like the ministry of love but anyways um i don't know if i mentioned this or not but they there was a lot of reviews saying the not a lot there was some people critical of the book saying the characters were a little too dimensional and the book's slightly overrated. I don't believe that at all. This, I would consider this a very, well, I mean, it is a classic, so it doesn't matter what I consider it per se, but I highly recommend if you haven't read this novel to read it. It gives you a new thought on uh, gov uh, local and world governments. Uh, including law enforcement, economic issues, and everything else. And the fact that they say like, oh, that could never happen or this could never happen, it kind of puts in perspective of what could or could not happen with, uh, 
I know this isn't the right word for it, but with like mob mentality or mass thinking and how we can build up a non-entity non like per se the government and basically make it into a god. This isn't a happy book by any means at all, but this is a very real book. In fact, it's probably more real than you probably would want it to be. I'm not saying everything's doom and gloom, and, but it does, sometimes doom and gloom is okay in life and in stories because it helps you put perspective to things and helps you to question things and hopefully it never does happen. Hopefully we can work more to a utopia than a dystopia. But if you haven't read 1984, I highly recommend it. I enjoyed the novel very much so. And lastly, my last book that I read. The third book I read in November was called Unholy. It's the second book in the series of the Unwind series. And um, in my past videos, I've done a review of the first Unwind book. Uh, this was my favorite book that I read in November. And basically, the second book takes off right after the first book. There, all the old characters, for the most part, come back. Um, there's some new ones to keep the story moving forward. They add more characters. And I don't want to give too much away because if you haven't read the first one, if I explain too much of the second one, it it would ruin it. It would give away too much. But I'll kind of describe the generalness of it and uh, you can decide it for yourself so if you guys would like to read it. So basically, it's the future. It doesn't really say what year, but nothing like over overly crazy in the future not like flying cars or anything like that everything's still pretty normal except for things here and there basically though there's three things that kind of changed there was a thing called the heartland war which was uh basically pro-life and pro-choice fighting against each other to where it went out into the American Civil War. And um, they come to an agreement that you can no longer have abortions. So if you have a baby, you can have a thing called storking it. Basically, where if I would have a kid, I didn't want it, I could go to someone else's house, leave it on their doorstep, and they find it legally by law, they have to take it in. They don't get a choice. So, there's that. Second of all, since abortion's no longer legal in the novel, they have uh, something called the Unwind Accord, and basically, once you hit age 13, if, you're, if you are considered to be like unuseful to society or unable to change or just a bad seed, they can unwind you, which is basically they take you apart. Like think organ donation on a massive scale. They can use like 99.98% of you like your eyes would go to a different person, your heart would go to a different person, your skin would go to a different person, hair, arms, legs, whatever. They split you up, other people get you. Whether it's for cosmetic reasons or health reasons, like if someone needs a new heart, I basically die, they take my heart. But technically, according to the government in the book, 
you're not really dead, you're living in a divided state since all parts of you are technically still alive but just in other people. So basically when a kid turns 13, between 13 to 17, this isn't a huge spoiler so I'll uh, say this. In the second book they lower it from 17 to 16. It's not really dramatic in the storyline. That your parents can, or if you're a child, your parents can sign the thing to have you live in a divided state. The cops who deal with this are called juvies and um, they come, they get you, you go to a harvest camp, the kids kind of call it a chop shop because you're, you're going to be divided. And uh, yeah, that's basically it with that. Um, later on in the book, uh, the second book does describe a little bit more of a history of it, how it came to be. Uh, the resistance it describes where these kids who are up to be unwound where they go into hiding and how there's like an organization to save them there is also things called tithing or tithes which is basically like um, religious people where they believe in giving a tenth of what they owe or to dedicate something to God they'll do it they'll dress their children up all in white and they will give them back to God to where they can harvest their organs, harvest their whole child and that way they're given back to God and they are from birth considered tied so they all they dress them all in white. These kids are very sheltered. They are basically raised to believe that you are going to divide the state because that's what God wants. And it discusses not only Christianity, but like different religions, Islam, Judaism, other religions. It's not uh, Catholics as well. I know Catholics and Christianity is the same kind of thing, but you know, different denominations. It describes all that though. And it describes how you, some, not every religion, but a lot of different religions, how they view tithing and how that comes to be. There is also um, a terrorist organization in the book who's mostly considered of use or teenagers and they're called clappers and they get like a, a thing to make them explode put in their blood and when they start clapping they explode. So neither the first or second book really goes too much into detail of what this is how it came to be so forth so i'm hope i'm going there's four books in the series and a couple side novels as well hopefully in third the third book it goes a little more detail about that because they give enough of it to under to where you understand what the book is or what the clappers are but not enough to completely understand But it deals with uh, Connor, who is like the main protagonist of the series. He escaped. He lived in that o in Ohio at the time, and in the town of Akron. And he escaped, and he was known as the Akron A Wall. And the AWOL is just mean absent without leave, which is like a military term, but they use it to describe if someone's trying to run away from their unwinding. And that's where the juvies, like the children police, come after and look for them to capture them. That way they can go to a harvest camp. That way they can be unwound. There's Levi, who was a tithe and doesn't, who turns away from it. And there's Risa, who's a ward of the state, which is basically an orphan. Like this, uh, the state, she lives in a state home and everything else. And all the children of that, of who are left at the state houses, are they're, all their last names are wards. 
So it's Risa Ward. But anyways, a lot of the second book deals more with that than the first book did. I mean, the first book gives a lot of description. The second one builds on that and adds more um, more history to it. I highly recommend it. Honestly, between this and 1984, I really recommend both those books. But since it both of it is dystopia, I wouldn't go in it all at once because it can get a little depressing unless you really like that type of stuff. I feel like I'm still going to finish the uh, 1980, or not 1984, the Unwound series, but I'm going to take a little break. I'm still reading Lord of the Rings from my past videos. I'm almost done with the Fellowship of the Rings, the ring, and uh, so that's a little lighter. It's a little different storyline, so it doesn't make you as depressed, but anyways... That's been my November 2018 wrap up. Thank you for watching. If you like and subscribe, please do. Uh, I appreciate your time and watching this video today. Hopefully you found something that you may have found interesting or a book that I've read that you might want to pick up. If you've read any of these books or find interest in them, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll link all the books in the description. Thank you guys and have a nice day. Bye.